Hey, welcome to the channel. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Matt Willie, and I love to motivate people to have a closer relationship with Jesus. And today we're going to be talking about communion. At the filming of this video, we're actually in the middle of the coronavirus or the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. It's, it's affected everybody in this entire world, and a lot of people are finding themselves unable to meet in their churches. And they're having to take some of their biblical principles or the biblical um, traditions and having to do things at home. And I want to encourage you that this communion, that communion, the thing that we're about to do, the thing that we're about to learn, is for everybody. And if you are a believer, then you can absolutely have communion with Jesus. He wants to have a relationship with you. Now, just before we get into all the teachings and learnings and the actual example of communion and me leading you through it, I want to let you know that this video is going to be broken down into two parts. The first part, I'm going to be teaching you about the different elements, about different scriptures, and the second part is going to be broken down in either an example of how I would lead communion for my kids or, or doing it at my church, or uh, you may follow along with me. It'll be in a format to where you can look and see how I'm going to do it, or I would really invite you to take communion with me because we can have Jesus wherever we are. He is always with us, right? But I want to encourage you, if this is if you don't have to go through this, I'll leave a timestamp down in the description below so that you can find uh, that example that I'm talking about, part two of this video. Now, uh, as we go into part one, I want to let you know that this is for everybody. This is for every believer. For communion for kids, communion for married couples. You may be by yourself watching this in a jail cell right now. Or you may be surrounded by friends and family, a whole, ho a whole host of people. But know that, that, that this is for every believer. There's nothing in the Bible that says a believer can't have communion. That doesn't mean that it's not a serious thing or that, um, that you should just do it just because. I want you to take your time and, I, and as I'm teaching you these elements, um, I want you to remember to slow down. I want you to remember to slow down and remember that, that you're communing with the Savior of the world. You're communing with Jesus Christ. Take your time. Enjoy His presence. Tune in to what God is doing around you and be there in the moment. Take your time. Remember, we are actually partaking in Christ's body and in Christ's blood. I love what 1 Corinthians 10, 16, and 17 says. It says, Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And it is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, we all share this one loaf. And that's talking about we're doing this as a corporate deal, but each individual person is taking part in the body and the blood of Christ. So I just want you to remember to take your time, slow down. While you do have access to Jesus, remember that this is a serious moment. And you should repent and examine yourself before each time you commune. Or take communion or, or partake in the Last Supper. I also want to encourage you to use what you have. You know, right now we're in the midst of the coronavirus, the COVID-19 thing, like I mentioned. And some of you may not have these individually packaged pieces of communion that comes with the little juice and the wafer. So what do you need to do communion? Well, first you need something to represent the bread or the body. And you need something to represent the blood. Some people use wine, some people use juice, some people use flavored waterings. Other people, for bread, they may use real bread or rolls or wafers or uh, graham crackers, regular crackers, whatever the case may be. The goal here is to connect with Jesus and not get wrapped up in the religious entanglements. Now we're in the our second part of this video and as I get ready to lead us in communion, uh, we've got our elements ready, you've got your bread, and you've got your wine, or wafer, or cracker, whatever you may have, uh, or your juice. <clears throat> but you have something that represents Christ's body to you, and you have something that represents Christ's blood to you. And I just want to say thank you for making it to this point, and for, and for getting ready to do something that's, that every believer should do. Every believer should remember that Christ made a sacrifice. And my favorite account is found in Matthew 26, 26 through 29 and it says while they were eating Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body so as you do this if you have a little piece of bread or a piece of roll or this wafer I just think that if you broke it and you rep you saw that that Jesus's body was broken for you or you remembered that piece of it 
Remember that Jesus' body was beaten. His beard was pulled. He had a crown of thorns that was placed on him, causing him to bleed. Even before all this started, he was in so much stress that he literally sweated blood. And he hung on the cross with, with markings, uh, holes pierced in his hands and his feet. And he laid there in agony and he gave up his body for you. He gave up his, his body for your healing. He gave up his body so that you could have right standing with God. And so, Lord, as we remember you in this moment, we remember you right now, wherever we may be, knowing that your body was laid aside for us, knowing that your body was beaten and broken so that we could have right standing and could be with you. And we remember your body in this moment. In Jesus' name, please partake of the bread. And then this is my favorite part here. He says, Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I love that part, and I love that he says, Drink it, all of you. Because right now, Judas is still sitting around this table. Right now, Judas is still, uh, still there. And Jesus says, All of you drink it. So I want you to know that tells me what I get from that piece when he says drink it all of you. He's talking to all 12 of his disciples. He's talking to all 12 of the disciples. They're all there at the table and he's still saying my blood is for you all the way up until that last moment. So if this is one of your last moments or this is a moment you want to remember, remember that he said drink it all of you. This is for the forgiveness of your sins. So whether it's been a long time, whether this is the first time, I want you to remember that Jesus Christ emptied himself out for the forgiveness of your sins. The forgiveness of sins helps us to have a relationship with him now. The forgiveness of sins lets us clothe ourselves with his righteousness so that we can have right standing with the Father. The forgiveness of sins is a, is a new covenant. The blood of the new covenant. I love that when Jesus breathed his last and he actually died, that it says the veil was torn from top to bottom. And behind this veil was where God was resided, where the presence of the Lord actually was. And it's as if God was ripping up this old contract and saying, now I have the relationship and the access that I've always wanted. The old contract is gone. The new covenant and contract is here. And it's because Jesus shed his blood for the gift forgiveness of our sins. So Father, as we've examined ourselves, we remember you in this moment. We remember the precious blood of Jesus. Would you partake, please? And Father, we just thank you for this moment in time. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are watching me now. I thank you very much, God, for your body and your blood. And I pray that you would take this moment, that you would seal it, Lord, that you would remember us as we remember you. Lord, that as we call upon your name in the midst of, of whatever trials or, or things are going on in our country, in our lives, we know that you are the answer for every situation. And we say thank you, and we love you, and we can't wait to commune with you again. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, thank you so much for joining me in one of these videos today. I'm glad that I could walk you through communion and kind of teach you a little bit about it. Remember that I always put stuff down in the description below uh, for, for your either reading or for you to learn or to just see where I got all my points from. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. And listen, if you, if you did like the content, if you do want to hang around and be a part of this community, please click the subscribe button and click that bell so you don't miss any of the videos. I love it when you leave me a like. It really helps me know that I'm doing a good job for you. Until next time, may God bless you and be close to you. In Jesus' name.